what was going on and it nearly gave me a break and it helped me kind of develop a different mindset where I realized the one flaw I have and the one thing that keeps letting me down is my belief in myself. So I just need to really work on believing in myself and what happened in Tokyo on the day of my race and the day of my final, I just believed in myself so much and I didn't have any fear and that was the best thing about it. Like the last thing I actually said to myself um, before I walked out was no matter what happens, I love you and whatever happens, happens. And okay. I think just that belief in myself and that kind of like self-love that I had is the reason I came home with the gold medal. That's, that's like I'm getting chills. Yeah, yeah. I really am. It's a brilliant mindset to have because like nerves can get the better of you. Because mm. I actually used to compete as a, as a swimmer as well when I was younger, and I used to know that you know you start shaking with nerves, but actually the nerves should help you to accelerate, not hinder you. Yeah. And that's like a really beautiful way the way you put that. Like I love yeah, it. And, and, you, oh, and by the way, she did one one nineteen for the hundred meters yeah. um, breaststroke. That's yeah. so fast. <laughs> Oh, fast. Thank you. I'm nowhere near that speed at the moment. Oh, it's so it's funny. Because um, this week as well, I'm, yeah. I'm swimming nationals. So Irish oh, okay. nationals are on and I'm yeah, in yeah. the middle of swimming it and training. And I saw I'm 100 brush up yesterday and I was nowhere near. Oh, well, yeah, well, you know, well, I'll get back there. Yeah, you will. But you went straight from the Paralympics to um, Dancing with the Stars. And you were unbelievable on that, by the way, uh, as well. Thank you so much. Um, did it take much convincing to do that? Of course not. Um, no. <laughs> I think it was the day I actually won my gold medal was the day I think uh, they had a meeting with RTE and they got approved for mm. the show. And I got the call straight away and I was like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Because like, they'd asked me a few times and I kept saying, after Tokyo, after Tokyo, and then the pandemic hit and I thought because the show got cancelled, I thought, is it not going to come back? And then when I got told it was coming back, I was so excited. But it's made you an even bigger role model for people with disabilities as well. Did that play a factor in it for you to take the part? Um, yes and no. I think mm. for me, I knew I wanted to stay swimming and I knew I wanted to compete in Paris, but I knew I needed to have a break yeah. and I needed to get away from the pool a little bit. Like I was still training, but I just needed to get away from the intensity of it all. So dancing with the stars seemed like <laughs> the That's best option. Um, so I kind of took it as like, this is something fun, this is something exciting to do. And it was only really when I was on the show that I realized kind of the impact it was having. And I was, I was getting so many messages from people just Mm -hmm. even understanding disabilities a bit more and like when I started the show as well I was so confident because I was an athlete and I was mm. so confident that I'd be able to do everything because I was an athlete like physically mm. it wasn't going to be challenging but mentally it was really hard in the beginning because I have lived such a privileged life in my Paralympic bubble of being able to do things and forcing myself to do things and and I, I went through that phase as a teenager of overcoming my insecurities around my arm. And now all of a sudden I'm doing something completely new mm. and there's no one for me to compare myself to. Yeah. So there was actually times during the show that like right before my yeah. dance, I'd actually be crying. And my oh. dance partner would be like, what's wrong? Oh. Why are you crying? And I was yeah. like, stop saying oh. that. You're just making <laughs> yeah, yeah, it worse. Yeah, yeah. I just need <laughs> to get through this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it really did. Like I was able to reach so many people, which is so important. Yeah, you definitely did. Yeah, you're amazing. You really are. Oh, Absolutely. I, I and, so and she got to have dry hair. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I know it's going to I literally, like, I learned, I, I said this to the makeup artist here earlier, and I was like, you just pick up so many things, and it's yeah. so nice, and it's a world that I'm not used to. And it's a world I'm, I've never been in before, where mm. hair, makeup, uh, even the costumes, costumes yeah, it's every gorgeous, week, yeah. the costumes, that's kind of like what pushed you to mm. want to be there every week because you knew what your costume was going to be. You knew yeah. what your dance was going to be. Music, you just wanted everything. to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you also knew, as a Westlife fan, that you were going to be <laughs> chatting to Nikki Bourne oh, yeah. every week. Oh so, so, so what was that like? And yeah. like, did you become used to it? Yes, I did get used to it. I think the first week I was like, how do we speak to this man? <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> How do I speak extra to nerves then know, with him, like. Nerves. But it got it, it got normal. Yeah. He was just Nikki from the show. But it was mm. actually um, when I got put into the dance off. You get mm. announced that you're in the dance off, and then yeah. it goes to an ad break. But everyone comes to you and tries to comfort you, being like, "You're going to be okay." And all I could see was in the beginning, Nikki Byrne was on the other side of the studio, and then all of a sudden he was in my face, Ooh. being like, "You're going to be okay. I know this is scary, <laughs> but you're going to be okay." And all I could think was, "Why is this man that I used to sing along to when I was like seven years old I in know, my bedroom like, in my surreal. face?" Like, yeah, it was so <laughs> overwhelming. But no, he's he's oh. so nice, and it was yeah. so nice to have that experience with him as yeah. well. Yeah, oh, listen, so cool. all the way to the final, and you deserved your place there. You, you were absolutely brilliant, you really were. It also gave you a platform, though, as you said, uh, to talk about and just be you.
Yeah. Um, this month is, uh, the month of April is Limb Difference Awareness Month. Yeah. And there's a word that's been coming up and you're talking about the harm it causes and that's ableism. Yeah. Can you talk to us about that? It's weird, like, as I said, I've been living in a Paralympic bubble. So, and in, in sporting world as well, I've never really noticed it. I've never noticed, like, I've, I've obviously noticed it a little bit growing up, like ableism. And what ableism is, it's, it's, the, it's treating someone differently because they're disabled. And it could be a conscious thing or it could be an unconscious mm. thing. And it's the presumption that someone is less because they're different. Mm. And I... I didn't really experience that a lot in the Paralympic world because that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but I think in the past few months, just having an experience outside of sport as well and, and meeting different people from all walks of life, I actually noticed that people were talking to me differently than they talked to other people. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I couldn't understand what it was. And then for a while I was like, it's because of my arm, like people can't look me in the eye and they yeah. can't talk to me. And, and people would say like, oh, you're not disabled to me. Or I don't think of you as disabled because you mm. don't act like other disabled people. And I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? Yeah. That's so insulting. Yeah. Mm. And I identify as disabled because I am. And if mm. I don't, how is another little girl or little boy growing up going to be okay with who they are. Like, it's important for me to acknowledge yes. that I am disabled. I may not be as intensely disabled as someone else, but it's yeah. still part of me and who I am. And mm. I, still, I still face challenges in society because of my hand. Mm. And I have to use my voice and speak up for other people mm. who suffer it more. Um, and I think just in the past few months, I was like, I really need to take I really need to take ownership of this mm. a bit more and I know I've I've been quite open about being visible and using my position to kind of be in everyone's face and get everyone used to my body but I think there's more that needs to be done because I was I've been shocked at like how far behind Ireland is in terms of treating everyone equally. I know we're coming to the end of the month but it is a brilliant initiative and yeah. you, you are you're talking about the language that some of us are using not deliberately, yeah, but being completely yes, offensive might be mean in the and well, like, yeah. But it's not right, yeah. as you said. But yeah. like, you're definitely, uh, this is another pun, making waves <laughs> and, pa and paving the way um, for so many. You're such an amazing role model. You really are. Like, Thank yeah, we're so proud of you. Listen, we're delighted to have you yeah. in. And you're staying for the show. Which I, yeah. is absolutely brilliant. Okay. Up next this evening, Derry's favourite uncle, also known as Kevin McAleer, is checking in. We'll see you back very soon.